Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous <clears throat> Sunday morning in the end times here on Sunday morning, February 7, 2016. So I'm actually bringing you my second Doomsday Sermon of the day. It is very rare. Only once or twice have I read from a novel. Uh, but this one, this book that I just found for two dollars at a library book sale, Four Skins Lament, a memoir by this writer named Shalom Auslander. It is absolutely hilarious, guys. It, it, it is flat out hilarious. Uh, never heard of the guy, and so I just uh, want to share a, a new writer with you. Uh, you. I guess he's a commentator on NPR, and since I don't listen to much NPR anyway, never heard of him, but I, I highly recommend this. Uh, and this is a book about, it's this Jewish guy, and you know me not being Jewish and not knowing much about the religion, I guess I probably missed some of the jokes, but you don't even have to be Jewish, although if you are Jewish, you would probably even, even think it was funnier about this guy, you know, being raised in this very strict religious household and uh, growing up and in this God-fearing uh, household and how he's trying as an adult to work through all of his Jewish neuroses about, uh, about God. And uh, absolutely hilarious. So I'm just going to read, I think this is from the very first chapter, I guess he's 35 years old at this point. Uh, it goes back and forth from his adulthood to his childhood. So what he's doing, he's stuck at a traffic light, at a red light in traffic, and this is his mind racing. He's thinking about uh, his unborn child. His, his wife recently announced uh, that she was pregnant. And he's going through all of this uh, neurotic thoughts about his 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 wife's pregnancy absolutely I, I love this so anyway I'm just gonna read you the section and if you think this is humorous I highly recommend you get four skins lament <clears throat> our unborn baby is the newest star of my horror shows just six weeks now since conception and already it has been deformed, deranged, diseased, miscarried, misdiagnosed, mistaken for a tumor and irradiated, sat on, bumped into, impaled during some ill-advised late-term sex, and overcooked when Orly, that's his wife Orly, fell asleep in a steaming bath. Are you sure about this? I had asked her as she sank with a sigh into the tub seems a little hot to me get out she had said i dragged my finger through the steam that had formed on the shower glass you don't have to make it easy for him i said him in this case meaning god she's talking about it. she doesn't need to make it easy for god to kill her unborn child get out when I was young, they told me that when I died and went to heaven, the angels would take me into a vast museum full of paintings I had never seen before. Paintings that would have been created by all the artistic sperms I wasted in my life. Then the angels would take me into a huge library full of books I had never read. Books that would have been written by all the prolific sperms I had wasted in my life. Then the angels would take me to a huge house of worship filled with hundreds of thousands of Jews praying and studying, Jews that would have been born if I had not killed them, wasted them, mopped them up with a dirty sock during the hideous failure of my despicable life. There are roughly 50 million sperms in every ejaculate. That's about nine holocaust 
in every wank. I was just hitting puberty when they told me this, or puberty was just hitting me, and I was committing genocide on average three or four times a day. <clears throat> they, now he's talking about his parents and his rabbi and his school teachers, they told me that when I died and went to heaven, I would be boiled alive in giant vats filled with all the semen I had wasted during my life. They told me that when I died and went to heaven, all the souls of every sperm I wasted during my life would chase me for eternity through the firmament. You don't have to be ordained to play this game. Go ahead, try it. All you need is terror, bloodlust, and a sense of gruesome, violent irony. Here's mine. I worry that God puts all the healthy, perfect, talented sperm in the early ejaculates of a man's life. The man's someday reward for the control he has had over his revolting animus. And that, as the years pass, and he ejaculates again and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Sperm quality plummets. By the time he is me, all that's left are the rejects. The cross-eyed, the buck-toothed, the overbitten, the underbitten, the flippered of foot, the webbed of finger, the idiots, the lazy, the criminals, the morons, the yutzes, the putzes, and the schmucks. That would be so God. I was at my office working on some nonfiction stories when Orly came by to tell me the news about her pregnancy. I'm pregnant, she shouted. We kissed, we wept, we held each other tightly. She, I suppose, imagining pink bows, lullabies, and baby booties. As I imagined kneeling beside a hospital delivery bed, sobbing, mother and child, dead. This almost never happens, the nurse would say, pulling the bloody gloves from her hand and tossing them into the bin. She pats me on the shoulder and I look up. Our eyes meet. She wrinkles her nose. We're gonna need the room soon, hun, she says. <clears throat> the stories I had been working on were about my life under the thumb of an abusive, belligerent God. A God who awoke millennia ago on the wrong side of the firm firmament and still has not cheered up. Working title, God walks beside me with a 45 in my ribs. I had already written more than 350 pages of it. Let's go out tonight, said Orly. We'll celebrate. We kissed, we hugged, we wept some more, and as soon as Orly had gone, I sat down at my computer, sighed, and dragged all 350 pages of my stories into the computer's trash bin. Are you sure, the computer asked me, you want to remove the items in the trash permanently? You cannot undo this action. I was sure <clears throat> there was no need to provoke him. I've been on God's chessboard long enough to know that every move forward every bit of good news, success, marriage, child, is just another godly gambit, a feign, a fake, a setup. It seems as if I am making my way across the board, but soon enough, God calls check, and the company that hired me goes under, the wife dies, the baby chokes to death. God's pick and roll. The rope lordy dope. God was here. God was there. God was everywhere. I'm telling you, Mouse A says, 
that fucking cheese is wired. Would you stop, whines Mouse B? You're such a pessa. Zip. <coughs> I wonder if by having a baby, I'm only falling into their trap. God's trap, my family's, Abraham's, Isaac's, Joseph's, of continuing the cycle of bringing yet another child to the altar. Be fruitful and multiply, saith the Lord, and I'll take it from here. The traffic light is still red and my mind wanders. It wanders into the graveyard. It strolls into the morgue. It meanders into Bergen Belsen. Something is wrong with the baby. Something is right now, at this very moment, as I'm sitting here at this traffic light, twirling a stray eyebrow hair and picking at the rubber steering wheel cover, right now, something within my unborn child is failing to develop properly. This something is not getting enough whatever. The whatever is not getting enough something. Some cell is failing to split. Some other cell is splitting too much. A few days ago, I resumed work on my God stories. I'm pushing my luck, I know, but if this child somehow actually lives, I want him or her to know where I come from, why I have not taught him or her what they taught me. Why I have, as my mother put it in one of her last ever emails to me, forsaken my people. I know that God knows what I've written so far, and I know that He knows that He is coming off like an asshole. He also knows it's only going to get worse before I am done and he is doing everything he can to stop me from finishing. Killing me? Too obvious. Murdering the very child for whom I am writing the book? That would be so God. I imagine that there is a tall black building in downtown heaven, lots of steel and concrete, very corporate, with a piazza for smokers out front and a cafeteria on the third floor, a building that is the universal headquarters for God's department of ironic punishmentation, the place where they work out just this kind of hilarious twist. This is where writers go when they die, the novelists, the poets, the sitcom writers, the stand-up comedians, to a steel desk and a hard chair and a tiny cubicle in the DIP, where every human story needs its own original ending, but where every ending is satisfyingly the same. Horrible. The driver behind me leans on her horn. The light has turned green. Green. I drive up around the bend where the cars have been slowing to pass a jogger trudging along by the side of the road. No accident. No dead wife. Not yet, anyway. Not today. I drive by, relieved for a moment, but only for a moment, before imagining that the jogger was my friend Roy, and that as soon as I turn off this road and head up the next road, Roy, somewhere behind me now, will be hit by a truck and killed. A delivery truck. A delivery truck on its way to Roy's house. Delivering, wait, his pornography. Ha ha, they will laugh at the DIP. That'll learn him. Somebody will get a raise. There will be cake in the cafeteria. If I have met you and liked you at all, I have imagined you dead, decapitated, dismembered. 
You're punishing yourself, says Ike. Ike is my psychiatrist. I know, I answer. You haven't done anything wrong, he says. I know, I answer. Ike says something further, but I'm not listening. I'm imagining the call from his sobbing wife. Ike's dead, she says. I know, I answer, and I know how. Horribly. There you go, and uh, there begins chapter one of this absolutely hilarious memoir by my new hero, Shalom Auslander, Foreskin's Lament. But now that I've brought a little humor into your day about dead, unborn babies, uh, I'm going to go, uh, I think, scramble up a couple of fertilized eggs for breakfast. You know, it's weird about these fertilized eggs. You know, I don't know how long these eggs have been sitting on the nest. I mean, am I gonna am I gonna crack open the egg, and is is there gonna be some little little chicken embryo in there, or am I gonna crack open the egg and find some baby chick that was uh, was just getting ready to be born? And now I guess I'll have squab for breakfast, or, or uh, Sancho Panza will be glad to have squab for breakfast. But anyway, Foreskin's Lament. Read it. Bye, guys. Come on, you little squab eater. We gotta go get some breakfast. Some dead, unborn baby chicks.